Now, notice what the false dichotomy that, that Sproul has put up here. Either you are regenerate and have a, a heart of flesh that's willing to accept, or you have a heart of stone. There's no middle ground here. And this is the problem with Calvinists, is that you're born already in a hardened, calloused, stone-like condition. But is that what the Bible teaches? It's not. We've been over this a time and time again about how the Bible actually explains that you must become like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says. Well, what's the difference between a child and an old person? Well, a child is moldable. Is he sinful still? Yes, he's still sinful. We're not talking about sin or guilt. We're talking about whether he's hardened or calloused to be willing to listen to the truth. Is he an old wineskin that can't hold new wine? Or is he moldable and willing to listen? As the book of Hebrews says, when you hear the voice of God, do not harden your hearts. Well, according to the Calvinistic system, your heart's born hardened. You're born unable to see, hear, understand, and turn. And yet that's not what the scripture teaches. What Calvinists have done, in my estimation, is they have skipped a step in the process of the hardening of a man's heart. That a person, though sinful, though inclined towards sin, though a need of a savior, a person's heart can grow more and more calloused and more and more like Satan, more and more hardened. You're not just born like Satan. You're not just born with this callous, hardened heart. But instead, if you close your eyes to the truth of God, if you continue to trade the truth in for lies, if you continue to suppress the truth, your heart will grow calloused. And we've looked at this passage a thousand times before in other broadcasts, but this is addressing specifically these quotes from R.C. Sproul, so I want to look at it again. Out of Acts chapter 28, verse 23, they arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to a place where he was staying. He witnessed to them from morning until evening, explaining about the kingdom of God from the law and from Moses and from the prophets. He tried to persuade them about Jesus. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. That's an act of the will, by the way. That's a, uh, an evidence of libertarian freedom, as far as I can tell. Some are convinced. Some would not believe. Okay? They disagreed among themselves, and they began to leave after Paul had made this final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke truth to your ancestors when he said, Go through Isaiah the prophet. Go to this people and say, You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing and never perceiving. Now, is that the condition of every man's heart from birth? According to Calvinism, yes, that's condition of everyone's heart. You're ever seeing but not perceiving. You're ever hearing but not understanding because of the fallen nature of Adam that you've adopted by, by sovereign decree. Is that ever established in Scripture? Not as far as I can tell, okay? This is a description of the Jewish people of this day, all right? This is not a description of ontological humanity from birth due to and some inherited uh, uh, inability from the fall of Adam by God's sovereign decree that's unchangeable and you have no control of it and you're born either, you know, a sheep or a goat, either elect or not, um, and you have no control. That's not what he's saying here, okay? He's talking about the Jews who have become old wineskins that can't take new wine. They have become calloused and hardened, and therefore they are now unable to see, hear, understand, and turn, okay? For this people, who is this people? Is it talking about all people's hearts, or is he talking about the Jews still? This people is talking about the Jews, okay? This people's heart has become calloused. Was it born calloused or has it become calloused? It has become calloused. Because they've become calloused, they hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Now, who closed their eyes? Oh, they're born with their eyes already closed because they're corpse-like dead, um, and, and they have no control over that whatsoever. Is that what it says? No, no, they closed their eyes. They did this. This is their choosing, okay? And because they did this, they cannot see. Even says so. Otherwise, what could they have done? Had they not become calloused, what could they have done? The Bible tells us in a didactic text, in an evangelistic situation, evangelistic call of an altar call invitation, come forward, come believe. Some are convinced, some would not believe. In that didactic text, Paul tells them, this is why there's some people not believing, because you have closed your eyes, because you have become calloused, because you're an old wineskin that won't take in new wine. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts in turn, and I would heal them. In other words, his desire is to heal them. He wants to heal them. He's held out his hands to them all day long. He longs to gather them like a mother hen gathers, gathers a chick. All these scripture passages which talk about, why will you die, O house of Israel? Repent and live. This is God longing for them. He wants to heal them. But the reason they're not being convinced, even though Paul's trying to use apologetics here, he's trying to persuade them. The reason they're not coming is because they have closed their eyes. They have hardened their hearts. They've grown calloused. And this seals the deal, verse 28. Therefore, I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles and they will listen. What is the difference between a Jew and a Gentile? Aren't both of them sinful? Yes. 
Both of them are equally sinful, equally deserving of condemnation. That's not the dichotomy Paul is setting up. What's the difference between an old man and a young man? They're both sinful, right? What's the difference between them? The young man is humble. He's willing to hear. The young child is willing to hear. He's willing to listen. He's moldable. The old is set in his ways. He's hardened in his heart. Okay. Same with the Jew and Gentile right here. What's the difference between the Jew and Gentile? Both sinful. That's not the issue. The issue is the condition of their heart. Do they both have hearts of stone? Not according to this. Therefore, I want you to know God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. Why does he anticipate that they will listen? Because they're less um, immoral? Because they're less sinful? Because they're less at enmity with God? Because of they have a different nature from birth than the Jews did? No, because though they are sinful, they are not calloused and hardened in their self-righteous rebellion against the things of God. They have not calloused their hearts and their ears to the teachings of Jesus. They're willing to still be molded and still to listen. That's the difference of the heart condition. Sproul never talks about that condition. It's either you're in or you're out. You're either hard or you're, you're soft. You're either for him, or you're against him. You're, it, it's black and white in the Calvinistic system. And either you're born with this condition where God has chosen you and he changes your heart from a hard heart of stone that you were born with to a soft heart that's absolutely willing to come to Christ or you're just out of luck. Okay, I mean, you, you're just, sorry, tough, tough luck. You're, you're gone. There's nothing you can do about it. You're going to hell, and you have no control over it whatsoever because God just, for whatever reason, unknown to you, didn't choose you for the foundation of the world.